getting that sky. Okay, so I've got like my little patch of sky in there. Do I, I got a little patch of sky over here to do. All right, so here I'm just going to go. A little laciness into it. Not quite as lacy over here. up my foliage so it's like what kind of texture do I want to work up my foliage with yeah. maybe I think I'm going to see about those leaves so I think I mean they're just they're really kind of like little blotto this guy here, right? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working just with this guy. So you're going to see me, you're going to hear me say, not infrequently, especially once we get to the panel project, I'm going to say, sculpt the form. I'm going to be like, you're painting. So I will, I frequently feel when I'm working like I am literally sculpting form. Thank you. And especially when I'm working with values, I will get this piece of work. literally feel like I'm sculpting and when I, I was saying that for a while and going I just don't know if I sound weird or not <laughs> and then um, when I was writing my third edition um, I interviewed um, Robert Moody who is the um, charge painter at the Metropolitan Opera, Robert Moody, the older, the L, uh, or the younger. Um, his father, Robert Moody, um, it, uh, the senior, is also a brilliant scenic artist and um, uh, was the scenic art teacher at Brandeis University for um, decades. So, um, and he started using this, he started using that term, he started using sculpting. And I'm like, okay, wait, I have, you know, like I have to break character here in the interview for a minute and ask you about that because I say that and I've never heard anybody else say that. And he's like, oh yeah, he's like, I went to the Rhode Island School of Design and he said I had a prof there who said it all the time. Hey Jordan. Oh, she's, she's not over, here. She's over there. Oh, hi. Can I have a bucket of water when you have a chance? Oh, there it is. I see it. It's down here. Thank you. So once I heard that, I'm like, oh, I don't feel so weird anymore. 
Like I, you know, I feel like I'm on to some, you know, like I was on to something, you know. So I need, I need to be like, oh, is that that's your right word? That's my right word. <laughs> So I felt much, much better after I heard that. I was like, okay. Like I, I literally feel like I'm like, you know, I'm not crazy. Okay. So this is cool up here. Like we just have like this like like a lot of this black background we can almost leave, right? Because it's just like we've got some like leaves that are sort of bunches of leaves that are sort of showing, but like you can let the black just be black, right? So the black that I've provided you with is mostly for oops. It's like, I didn't mean to put the paint there. <laughs> That's mostly what that black is for. Because, I mean, if this goes well, you won't actually have to use it. Isn't this weird? It looks so dark in the tray. And then you put it on there and you're like, whoa. Hello. Okay, so I can I can can I tell you a story on myself? Yes. yes. I was working last night prepping your workshop here, and I was like doing five shades of gray. And I kept like painting it over and painting it over and going, God damn it, like why don't these two colors, like it looks like they're the same color. And I was like, damn it, what is going on? And then I realized that I had actually only mixed four shades of gray. Oh. And that's why the two of them always look the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, we're just going to here. Okay. Like always makes me think of that like, yo, know, the Avengers. Okay, someone's getting hurt. Okay. That was to the best of us. The Hulk. So how accurate are you trying to get with placing? I'm trying to everything? get the basic movements of value. Okay, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm basic. <laughs> I'm trying to get the basic movements of value. apologize um, a little bit like um, as I do demonstrations um, you guys I just freaking love to paint like, I mean I just which is you know probably propitious um, since that's what I do since it's what I teach so um, you know like I do apologize if sometimes I get in my head a little bit but I'm just like just enjoy myself immensely. So. Okay. 
lighter ones. Okay. So now I need to start on like all of this, right? It's like, oh my god, stiff new grass. What am I gonna do? Uh, <laughs> I agree. I could not agree. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to like lay down these pillows. Yeah, no, it's actually not too late. I'm going to lay down kind of a little bit of a graded base coat. I'm just going to keep moving my roller down in value and getting and just trying to keep that sort of that nice horizontal action going. Now, please remember as I do this, I am not telling you how to do this. You are welcome to do other things. There are no right or wrong answers. It's just we're all exploring, and it's like, well, this is the good part. So does it make sense why I'm doing the roller first? Because I need that base coat first. in between the regular colors. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some texture. There we go. You know that art of war quote, no battle survives engagement with the enemy? Mm. You, any of you heard that? You've heard that before, right? No. Okay. <laughs> so it's sort of the same with paint techniques. <laughs> it's like you plan them out, and some of them you do, like actually plan them out, and boom, that is the way you end up doing it. But the way that we get past that is like you all are going to be digging right into your projects, right? But in the, uh, in the scenic art productions, what we train our students to do is we train them to do um, sampling on a regular basis. So in production, what you're going to see is you're going to see our students sampling all the time, first of all and foremost, so that they know that when they get to the scenery, what they're do, you know, they've already tried what they're going to do. They've already given it like you know, like kind of a dry run, so to speak. So just bear that in mind. Right? But this is paint class and the difference is not that you're not welcome to sample in paint class. And lots of times once the students get into intermediate and advanced, like we definitely, 
encourage them to um, sample things. So, but just be aware that that's like part of the scenic art process is the sampling and kind of like, you know, that layer of discernment. Think of it this way, like if you were working in a um, production company, Right? And the scenic artist like came up to you and was like, oh, let's just give this a shot, you know, on, you know, that piece of scenery, that unit, that element that had just cost like, you know, $55,000 to create, right? And to fabricate. You'd be like, um, so I'm thinking of going in another, you know, going, going in another direction. <laughs> Another fabrication company because they're making me feel really nervous right now, right? So that's what we teach our students in the scenic, scenic painting program. Like, you know, like go ahead and sample first and like figure it out. So that being said, like just remember you're like surrounded. This is one of the reasons we keep this floor covered with bogus paper is like you are like you know you can always give something a shot first or like test it a little bit on the bogus paper before you commit and if ever you want to sample flat just like ask there are tons of them over there so you know that's like that's available to you that's always available sort of getting good. All right. I think it's time to dig into the tree a little bit. right tree I am going to come back to my dry roller and um, just to do Establish some of the values. That's when dry wood gets good. Just barely there. So I think something that you'll discover, and um, you know, a lot of you know, all of the undergraduates, you know, you're taking or have or you have taken your visual arts courses. Basically, a big part of what we are trying to teach you here in this program and at this school is how to see. It's a huge part of what we're trying to teach you how to do. 
um, because to observe is to be able to like recreate or to you know ac accurately portray or just even to comprehend. So it's a huge part of what we try to do here is to teach you how to see. So as you're doing this, I want you to like try to pay attention to just looking at the values. Try not to go, I'm doing a tree, right? Just try to look at the values. So now I'm going to come at it with my other roller and keep working on what? with this guy. Cool
same thing I did with the background, just kind of like upping the value a little bit as I come forward. It's this weird thing where there's this hard texture that kind of crosses the To a certain extent, yes. Yeah, I mean, like, because it is a demo, I am always right. pushing the boundaries a little bit. <laughs> it's weird because as scenic artists, we do sort of develop this kind of innate sense of, like, when we can, like, kind of go forward, mm -hmm. right? And you will be able to tell. You'll be like, okay, <laughs> backing off now. I'll wait. Tell me when you're ready. Sorry, I was just watching your head. Oh. <laughs> it was, no, it was, it was, it was, it was delightful. <laughs> Not a brush. <laughs> Might be going, why isn't she doing anything in that center there? What is going on? Right? Okay. So <laughs> so this is called party.
So what made you choose that specific area to do this technique? Was there like a reason behind it? Yeah, look at the, are, are you looking at the copy? No. The way the gray is. I think you That makes sense now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's more like stripey, I guess, more vertical. Right. Wow. So technical with it. How did you know this? <laughs> what did you like to know? <laughs> so you can card on edge, you can card on the flat, right? And like, it's a fancy way of saying I'm pushing the paint around with the credit card. Okay? Slow. Now this is going to have to dry. Because I need to card on top of it with another color, but there's no way I can do that while this is that wet. Okay. So I'm just going to wait on that. And then, oi! Christmas tree. Ah. Oh. So I've got all of this stuff going on in these burrows. And it's like, it's all kind of like, nee, 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 nee. okay? Christmas trees, and there's another tool um, that um, I don't have out right now that I call, and I take, I am taking credit for it because I invented it for all those freaking nutcrackers I had to do, <laughs> oh, all no. those freaking Christmas trees and wreaths and <laughs> like garland things over the fireplace, right? And it's like trying to figure out how to do needles and call it the sea urchin. Nice. And so basically, it's just like a star that looks sort of like a sea urchin, right? You know, or like, you know, a sunflower on crack, like, you know, <laughs> cut out of foam. And I tap, I just like kind of do a tap and drag with it. And it makes great Christmas, it makes great ornaments. So it's a Christmas tree, makes for this, like, this weird texture in here, like, Right? Well, this is, this is your tool. Hopefully it will make you stop making that noise. <laughs> oh, you are, you actually part of this.
could you do what I'm doing with a brush right now? Yeah, but why aren't we doing it with a brush? No brush project. Perfect. Hey, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Just to help you figure out other ways to do stuff. If you had, like, suppose you had a whole bunch of stuff that sort of looked like this bow, right? And you were like, how am I going to hand brushes to 10 different painters and get the same results, right? You're like, there's no way. Everybody's going to do it just a little bit differently. And I'm going to basically, I'm going to see 10 different hands in this, in this thing. And I don't want to. That's like not the point. So this is one of the ways of kind of ameliorating that and going, okay, I am going to put a tool into all y'all's hands that's going to make you all paint in a very similar way and create a very similar thing. So that's, a, that's another reason why a texture tool might be enormously useful. Because it's like, if I ask everybody to do this with a brush, everybody's going to do it differently. But if they all have a Christmas tree, they kind of don't have a choice. They still, they're all going to kind of do that same sort of Christmas tree, like texture, right? So that's another reason why the, you know, we love our texture tools. Okay. So this is, like, this is at that point where I really do need to let them dry a little bit before I can, like, I need to work up this a little bit, value-wise, right? I could go back, and you are allowed to do this. You may not, you may use a foam brush. You just may not paint with a foam brush. You can stipple with a foam brush if you want, though. So if you use it basically like a paint stem, you can totally do that, right? So I might just like go, I just need you to be like a little bit more lacy in places. Just to break up. My areas, like I said, black is for whoops. And you'll notice something else the longer you all, like we all get to work together. I squint a lot, okay? I'm squinting because squinting makes me see values, okay? It also helps to objectify what I'm looking at and it just, like it changes my point of view. So you'll see me do that a lot when I'm doing demonstrations, you know, like you know, all of a sudden you'll be like, she's squinting. Like it's not because my eyes are tired. It's I'm purposefully like blurring my vision, and that helps me objectify what I'm looking at. And helps me see helps me see um, value. All right. So we have enough time to fold and draw. Because we did not get to do that last week because I wasn't watching the time. <laughs> so, we have a draw over there on the pound table. There's a flare. If you want to grab it, you can get it out over here. Go for it. Come on. Grab the draw. Gamma, you need your fingers. 